Hi, hello! Sergey from Core here with yet another Ellipse tutorial. In this video, I would like to show you how to create a new notebook, manually upload some assets, and then set up your widgets on a page. So first of all, uh, let's go ahead and click Add Notebook, and we can just call it Demo, then hit Create. Once that's done, let's click on our notebook. And because this is a brand new notebook that is pretty much empty, we're immediately prompted to upload some assets. Let's click Browse Files. And here I have a prepared 3DM file for my 3D model, some data as a CSV, and some drawing in the SVG format. If you're unsure how to prepare these files so that they're formatted in the correct way, check out our other videos about uploading to Ellipse from Rhino Grasshopper or from Revit. I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these assets and click Open. We shouldn't really change anything in this dialog. This is just showing us what files we're about to upload and what file types Ellipse detects. And let's just go ahead and proceed. So now that the upload has finished, let's just click Done. And now we have a clean canvas. On the left-hand side, we can actually see all of the assets that we just uploaded. So in the Data tab, you will see our CSV data file that got converted into the JSON format. In the 3D tab, we have our 3DM file, that's our 3D model, our 2D drawing. We did not upload any GIS information. And in the Files tab, you will be able to see our original CSV that, once again, as I said, got converted into JSON over here. Now, if at any point we decide that we want to upload more data, we can just come here, click Upload Assets, and add whatever drawings or models or data uh, that we like. OK, so how can we actually see the data that we just uploaded? Well, this is what the widgets are for. And widgets are essentially little elements that you can place inside of your layout that allow you to visualize different aspects of your assets. So for instance, if you have a 2D drawing, you can use a 2D viewer to show it. If you want to show a 3D model, here's the 3D viewer right there. And of course, there's a whole plethora of different widgets for showing data. There are histograms, scatter plots, toggle grids, color by, whatever your heart desires. Let's actually add some widgets to our page. So here I can start by dragging over this 2D viewer. And as you can see, Ellipse lets me decide where on the canvas I want to drop it. So I'm just going to drop it right here. Using this corner control, I can also change the dimensions of my widget. Maybe I want it a little bit taller. Next, uh, I can drag over a 3D viewer. And I can also change its dimensions by dragging the corner. And now let's uh, add some widgets that deal with data. So for instance, color by can go here and we'll stretch it out a little bit as well. Toggle grid for filtering geometry based on specific attribute can go here. And the donut chart fits over here nicely as well. Now, an important aspect of Ellipse uh, that I want to talk about next is settings for different widgets. And the case is that certain widgets, such as viewers, work straight out of the box. But some other widgets, especially those that deal with data, need a little bit of additional setup. So we can go to the settings for each specific widget by clicking on it and then navigating to this settings section over here. In the case of the toggle grid, for example, it asks us for a specific attribute to use for filtering. So here we can say, all right, let's maybe filter based by category. In case of the donut plot, we are prompted for two things. So uh, first of all, the attribute that will be the name of each individual donut slice. Uh, so let's base it on the category as well. And uh, the other one is the actual value that each slice will represent. So what are we actually measuring? Let's do area, because why not? Now, you might have already noticed this, but despite the fact that we're able to move our widgets around on the page, we don't really seem to be able to interact with them. 
I can't really orbit around this 3D model, I can't pan or zoom into my drawing, but this is because we are currently in the edit mode. In the edit mode, Ellipse allows us to build our layout and pick our widgets and tweak their settings, but in order to activate our page and make everything go live, we have to do one of two things. We can either press this preview layout button to preview our page without committing all of the changes that we just made, or we can just go ahead and hit save. Now, pressing this button had a couple of effects. First of all, uh, the two buttons have disappeared and got replaced by edit layout, which will take us back into the edit mode if we click it. On the left hand side, the menu is now different, it has different tabs up top, but also from orange, it's turned into purple, which is a nice visual clue to let you know which mode you're currently in. But of course, the most important giveaway is the fact that all of our viewers and all of our widgets are fully interactive. I can pan around my drawing, I can zoom in, I can spin around my 3D model. And also you'll notice that when I highlight certain elements in my 3D model, I can immediately see the same elements highlighted in my drawing and in my associated widget. And vice versa, when I highlight a specific category in the donut graph, I can see all of the elements that belong to it because they also get highlighted. And if I highlight something in the drawing, I can also see it in all of the other viewports. If I click on a specific element, I can see all of the data associated with it. And these are the attributes that we exported from the CAD software where we put together our assets. And this is what Ellipse is really about, interconnecting your 3D geometry, your drawings, and your data in a way that can quickly give you insights about your project. Now, another thing that is very often required when dealing with complex projects that have a lot of different drawings and models and just elements that you have to go through is the ability to filter data. And this can be accomplished through toggle grid, which we have over here. So I can start to disable certain elements in my viewports. And as you can see, uh, when let's say I decide to hide the ceiling and the floor just to look at my curtain wall, everything else in my drawing and in my 3D model has disappeared. So this is very, very useful when you're dealing, as I said, with very complex 3D models or very busy drawings. Finally, a very popular feature of Ellipse is the color by. The color by allows you to pick a specific attribute and color all of the elements in your scene by that attribute. So for instance, if I click area, I can immediately see different elements with different surface areas in my project. Let me turn on the other elements, um, and you can see that they're also colored uh, based on that attribute. Or maybe I want to look at the category. So these are all of the different categories, and everything is highlighted once again, both in my drawing and in my 3D model, and also in my donut graph. Maybe I want to go ahead and try volume or material, so any kind of numerical information or categorical information, you can instantly visualize using color by. Also, let's say I don't particularly like this specific gradient, so I can go ahead and change the look and change it to something else that better suits my taste. And as you have seen, this is only a handful of widgets available within Ellipse, and all of those widgets are fully interconnected, and they will really allow you to create very compelling visualizations for better understanding the project at hand and for making compelling presentations. Now, the last thing I would like to talk to you about today is pages. So if we come to this tab on the left-hand side, you will see a single page that got created automatically when we uploaded our assets. Of course, if we don't like this name, we can rename it as something else. But the point being is that so far we've been adding widgets to a single page inside of our notebook. And of course, as the name notebook suggests, we should be able to add other pages to it. So here, 
uh, we can click on add page and call it you know, my new page. And immediately, once again, we have a blank canvas. We can click the edit button. We can add some widgets. I don't know, maybe we add a bar chart. Um, we'll have to configure it, but it's fine. We'll just hit save. And now, um, if we go back to pages, we have our old page called default and our new page called my new page. And we can toggle between the two. So using ellipse, you can really start creating those individual dashboards and individual layouts to curate the presentation of different aspects of your project. And this is just a nice way of creating a narrative uh, for your work. Now, it's also possible to create sub pages. If we click on these three dots and um, go to add sub page, we will be able to add a sub page. We'll just creatively name it that. And here you'll be able to see that my new page has a new page parented to it called sub page. Ellipse only allows you to have one level of indentation, so you can't create a subpage of a subpage, um, but that just adds another level of hierarchy for your notebook to better structure all of your layouts. And this is really it. Uh, this is how you add widgets to a layout in Ellipse in order to create different interactive visualizations. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.